house was built in 2017, but we were in Myanmar for part of that time, so we're sort of in the house really since March 2018, yep. I guess, or February, March 2018. Um, mm. Yeah. Because you were over there with the Rohingyas, weren't you? Uh, well, certainly the Rohingya crisis was at its peak then, and Lee was doing a lot of work with the refugees, but more the long-term refugees on the Thai-Burma border yep. yeah. and on the other side. But yeah, it was certainly a problem. It's a three bedroom, one bathroom, shared bathroom, with a little loft. Yes, we love our loft. Oh yeah, and an alfresco area, two alfrescos, one on this yeah, south side, yeah. yep. and this one over here, the room. So, yep. on the rear of your property where you lived at the front, um, which is an old character house. The big thing about your home though, is that people can see that they can have a three bedroom, two bathroom home on a very small footprint with a very efficient home. One bathroom. One bathroom, sorry. Three bedroom, <laughs> one bathroom yeah. on a very small footprint. Yeah. 115 or something like that, yeah, I think. about 115 um, square metres. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, we've got the attic, so that yeah. gives us a bit of yeah. extra storage yeah, space. Extra and the yeah. other nice thing, actually, with the attic, with the attic which we didn't um, touch on, was just um, that I love about it is in summer as well, we've got a Velux window in there that's op that we can open. And so when we open that in summer as well, overnight... Yeah. Um, it just, goes straight it just up and out. draws out the heat as well, and so that's yep. that's yep. really fantastic as well. And so, what was it that had you decide to do it? Many things, but feeling like, uh, in a sense, a frustration with not enough being done around climate change and you know all the things that we know need to happen in our world, and feeling like, okay, your own house is one thing you've got a bit more control over. Yep. Uh, we'd always done a lot of volunteer work overseas as well, so didn't have many resources to put towards a, a big new block and a big new house sort of thing but yeah it had this little mm. fibro house uh, on a big block and so I'd always mm. sort of thought oh well down the track it'd be great to build out the back and yeah so I thought well it'd be great if we could build something sustainable yeah. uh, but having been all around the world knowing as well most people live in small houses if mm. they're lucky yeah. uh, it'd be good to do something that's sustainable not, in not only in terms of solar and um, passive solar and uh, location and stuff, but just in terms of size and you know what we could do with the size. I remember last year, in fact, on Sustainable House Day, a few people sort of said called it like a TARDIS because yes. there's lots of little features <laughs> within this little house that were really nice, and that's I guess one of the things we loved. And all the little nooks and crannies, in a sense, that we've got because of the house being tilted to get the north sun. Yeah. So we can sit out here. You know, it's nice sun in in winter to sit out here. Um, of course, in summer we have the um, shade sails up, so it's still good. And we've got the grapes that give us a bit more shade in summer as well, but not in winter. Mm. Um, but then you can also sit over the other side of the house. So, yeah, so you've just got different spots yep. where you can be. Um, and the other thing, actually, that I've never really thought about was, but just sitting here, for example, because we did, as you said, orient it around the trees that I planted when we first moved into the house in 96. Mm. And uh, we do love that you can sit here and look through the house and mm. see the trees on the other yeah. side. Yeah. So it's yeah. not like the house itself is imposing as well. Yeah. And so you and you know you get the light, of course, when you're inside, but you also yeah can see through, see the trees. So yeah, we just feel like it's practical yeah. as well, yeah. um, which is which has been great. And building around the trees was really important to you and fully understandable. You had some limits with the house, but in actual fact. Those limits, are you happy with the outcome and still, you know, making sure you worked around the trees? Oh, I mean, I think, you know, you've got to adapt to your environment. Mm. I think that's the biggest reason we've got problems in our world because we think we can just plonk whatever we want wherever rather than try and work in with the yeah. environment. And, and so many blocks you see where, where people are building out the back and this happened all around us. In fact, there were big trees all around us. And then as people subdivided, all of those trees got pushed over with big houses put right to the fences. Mm. And so having said that, this backyard was didn't have many trees in it when we first moved in in 96. So I sort of planted a lot of the trees there were. Uh, but yeah, it was great to be able to work around those and some local trees as well, native trees, and Mary and others. Um, so yeah, just great to be able to work in with those. And we've even got from since we moved in in 96, there was... Uh, couple of bobtail goannas on yep. the block as well. And so it's so nice to think, okay, yep. we're nurturing environment yep. where they can continue yeah, to exist yeah. as well as us. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been mm. nice. Mm. Yeah, very good. So 
So I guess in terms of the zones, um, I mean, we basically have one living area and, you know, a lot of houses these days will have many different living areas. So that has its limitations at one level, but also it's nice because you do have a communal area where, where everyone can be. And particularly like in winter and stuff, it gets the, the nice winter sun. So um, so that's that's nice. The light's good. Um, yeah, we love the, the kitchen and you know, the way it is with yeah lots of light, but also an open space that people can, can be in. And in terms of the performance, it's great to get the north sun in. Behaviour is one of the things we struggle with in terms of sustainable living. Even something as simple as a, a lounge that we had that had an L shape and the L was on the north side, you know? And after a while I said to Lee, oh, you know, maybe we should try and, because it's one of those Ikea ones, you can actually yes. put it on either side. So yeah. then she managed to screw it back on the other side. Yeah. So we did get a bit more of the north sun onto yeah. the tiles to warm yeah. them up. Yeah. And it's certainly lovely walking on the, the tiles when they're warm after yeah. a, a warm yeah. winter day. So we've got three and a bit um, kilowatt bit on the front kilowatt. and we've got yeah. one and a bit on the front house. Yep. Yeah. With this three and a bit on this one, so, and running the house, is yours all electric or did you put gas? All electric, no, we don't have any gas. Yep. We're right. against fracking and we're glad to get rid of uh, yep. gas. Fantastic. 10,000 litre tank. 10,000 litres. Um, and so that's great because I think, particularly with water being more intermittent these days in yep. terms of even over winter, having a bigger tank I think has been an advantage in that sense. So even if we don't have rain for an extended period, once it's full, that really keeps you going. So that's been great uh, for and you know for both the toilet and the laundry, because yours is plumbed into the toilet in the laundry, which is the best use of. Rain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so in winter, you know, yeah, given how much people use water on yep. flushing the toilet, for example, yep. it's fantastic to think, wow. And the other thing actually we've got in the toilet is we've got one of those ones where you wash over the um, cistern oh, yes. as well. Yes, yeah. And so equally, even with COVID, I feel like, oh, that's such a great thing for our grandkids or whatever. Every time you go to the toilet, you automatically, if the yeah, water's there, yeah, it just yeah, reminds you, oh, yeah, I should wash yeah, my hands. Yeah. So we really love that sense of using water that comes off the roof. Um, given I've got the trees, of course, it does mean I've got to be up there pulling the leaves off yes. the gutters. I notice your gutter guards up. Uh, okay. No, that's great, Peter. Thanks. Um, no, it's good. So, yeah, it's just sad that we can't uh, have people through this year, but yes. hopefully next year for Sustainable yeah. House Day we'll be back on track yeah. to have the human beings uh, interacting because it was great fun to see them come over the house like yeah. a bunch of bees yeah. humming around, talking, um, asking questions, you know, enjoying it. And and I guess the other thing for me is, you know, just uh, it brings together lots of different things. So. I'm really into a sort of holistic thing. And so, yeah. you know, like the sustainable development goals, you know, yeah. you've got water, yeah. you've got Very energy, yeah. um, you've got climate change, uh, you've got nature, you know, we've got mm. our couple of little bobtail goannas, you know, mm. and you're trying to create an environment where mm. all of those things can yeah. mutually, yeah. beneficially interact and survive, mm. you know, yeah, and thrive. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so I think that's the nice thing about a house like this, you know. You really can, you know, I've got trying to have a go with a banana tree out the back mm. and you've got the passion fruit, but you've also got the bobtails and you've got mm. the Mary tree and uh, the natives. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's just mm. a nice combination um, that we, yeah, we really enjoy. So, yeah.